You wanna do your job? I asked Dane, smiling sweetly. I mean, how you can't forget you're the squad leader is beyond me. If Violet gonna be one thing, she gonna be a baddie. If she gonna do one thing, she gonna be a baddie. And I support, I support, I stand, I'm with Violet. Hi, welcome back. In today's video, as you can tell from me, picking up this Bible thick book, we were doing a book vlog and I'm going to be reading Fourth Wing. Well, actually, here's the thing. We already have like less than 200 pages left. Let me just explain. I want to build a library. And in order to have a library, you need a thousand books. Am I going to have a thousand books in this room? No. no. I picked up this book because I was helping myself collect the library. This was very trending for a, a little bit. A fantasy book that came out this year. I had no idea this book came out this year. I thought it just was like just a new trend for book talk or for, for social media. But this came out this year. And then I'm guessing when it came out, it like blew up and everyone was loving it. I didn't buy when it was like like really like trendy but then eventually I was like okay everyone's talking about it and they're saying that it's like kind of like Hunger Games I recently finished reading The Battle of the Songbirds and Snakes I was gonna make it a part of a video or something but then I was I just kept reading it and then I was like I had to make it its own video because it's so much that goes on it's just actually kind of silly goofy and crazy I am on page 326 and there's 498 pages so I'm literally like less than 200 pages done here's my thoughts so far I, I don't, don't like, like Dane. Dane. I also have a terrible feeling that he is going to betray. Also should say that this book, this video is going to have spoilers. Read it for yourself and then come back to this video. Anyway, Violet, I mean, she's the main character. She's a baddie. She, like, what can you say against Violet? Like, she's literally just that girl. Also, I looked up what illness she has because I'm like, she has too many ailments to be like, Effler's, Effler's doubt. Hello? Effler's Danlos Syndrome, a chronic condition that affects the body's connective si tissue. That's why this girl's so weak and frail, because she has EDS. The reason why I don't like him is because when you first meet him, he's like basically like the boy next door, dream boy, the bestie that she's in love with, fine, whatever. And at first they were cute, but then he was the only character that didn't come to terms with the fact that she's in the school. He's trying to have her escape. Okay, you could be a scribe. We could like sneak out to make you be a scribe. And she's like, okay, but like if my mom finds out, she's gonna make me be a writer again. Like there's, there's no point. No point. And it's crazy how the mom is so mean and like this has a distaste for scribes but yet she literally married, married one. one how are you gonna disrespect scribes but you married one like it's weird but whatever the longer she's in the school he keeps being like but i could figure out we have to get you out and she's like you're still calling me weak when i just did all these things like why aren't you believing in me that i can get this done it was just annoying also you can tell that violet wants to be in the school deep down because of her having eds everyone calls her weak so her being a writer and achieving that goal will prove to people that she's not as weak as they claim her to be pretty plain and simple the reason why I think he's going to betray her is because they keep mentioning how much he doesn't like breaking the rules. And the only time when he's okay with breaking the rules is when it's to benefit himself. Because he keeps talking about how, like, he doesn't want to see her die because, like, it's going to ruin him because he cares about her so much, blah, blah, blah. I feel like Dane's in the position where he feels like he's watching a friend make a terrible mistake and he feels the need to constantly tell them that this is a bad idea and you should avoid it. But then the friend's like, I want to do this, like, just let me do it. And he hasn't just hit that level of respect that this is her decision. Even though I don't agree with it, this is her life and she has a right to choose what she wants to do at the end of the day. This is a comment that I feel like kind of wishy about because it's like the reason why they haven't they, they're not dating because he's a year old, older than her and him being a squad leader in a second year him dating a first year would look bad part of me at first was like that's mad pathetic then I thought about it a little bit and I was like hmm I kind of get it because they're going to college to figure out their careers now are their careers a death sentence because they're riders they're riders doing the dragon thing they can die in battle yeah when you think about it as a career not just like as a status in school is it okay no it kind of makes sense why he's hesitant on dating her because he's like he's worked so hard to get this far and he feels like a relationship would hinder that and he doesn't want that but then also there's other people like characters like one of the characters Riddock who I love Riddock I have a I have a I don't want him to die yeah I'm not done with the book so I don't know what happens at the end but I just really hope Riddock doesn't die or I don't know how to pronounce her name. The girl bestie. I don't want her to die. She's a queen. I love her. She's a tough queen. We stand. He's the guy. I think he he slept with like a, a second year or a third year or something. And then he was like, oh, well, like it can make you look bad, but it's not breaking the rules. Like he's like, I could do what I want. Like they they like me. I like them. We could we're in college. We do what we want. So I love Riddock. At first I thought Riddock was like an annoying rude class clown. Come to find out he's not. And he's just like actually like a sweetheart. Because when he defended Violet, when like someone was trying to disrespect Violet and like call her, like, oh, she's the weakest link this and that he was like yo like that's not funny like how are you gonna disrespect your squad me like that and i was like rid up and then when they when they all survived the i think the challenge or something some challenge he was like we did it we did it and he gave her a hug i was like rid up please we stand rid up we stand reading 
Now Zayden, I feel like it was kind of obvious that Zayden and Violet were going to be star-crossed lovers at this point. Like it's giving Romeo and Juliet, Mira said don't go to Zayden. And who's the first person that she genuinely has a connection with romantically? Zayden. I'm all for it. He's a character that we shouldn't like because of the whole rebellion thing, whatever. Other than that, there's no other reason. Well, Dane said that Zayden has some secrets and we're like, oh, what do you mean secrets? Like, so I'm guessing we're gonna find out at some point. So yes, I'm up to the part where she has the two dragons and then Jack still wants to kill. I'm, 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 I'm confused. Confused as to why Jack still wants to murder Violet. I understand, you know, you want to kill people off so you can have a better chance of becoming a writer. But they're writers now. And he and still he wants still to kill her. Kill it could be because he just is mad because she humbled him so many times and embarrassed him. But I feel like it's deeper than that. Because since the first day they got up the steps to cross the thing to see if they were gonna make it or not, he was out to kill her from the beginning. I mean he was he was violent in general. With her, it's like a special extra connection of violence. And if there isn't, I'm gonna be shocked. One more thing before I go. One thing that I was noticing while I was reading it, like when I was I understand why people said it was like Hunger Games. So I was like, okay, I get the Hunger Games thing. But at first I was like, it's like Hunger Games and How to Train Your Dragon had a, had a crossover. Then I was like, well, yes, but then also I feel like it's Hunger Games, How to Train Your Dragons, and Harry Potter, them three mixed together. I was like, because they're in a school, Harry Potter. They have dragons, How to Train Your Dragon. And then the whole life and death thing, Hunger Games. If Harry Potter, Hunger Games, and How to Train Your Dragons had a baby, it would be this. Another book that reminds me of Harry Potter, which they also mentioned Harry Potter in the book is La Bizona. I want that book to be a movie so bad. I don't understand how it hasn't been a movie yet. Lobbies don't need to become a movie like stat. Unless the person doesn't want to sell their rights and I kind of get it. But like, come on. Let's just pretend that these are not poking out like I have antlers on my sides. I'm on page like 336 and Dane's just such a petty little baby that it's just like, he's kind of embarrassing himself at this point. Zayden has just been up in the antics with like, He's aware that Dane about Dane's feelings for Violet. And after their little kiss, he's been like extra like, oh yeah, she's mine. And what about it? And Violet's like, stop. And yeah. Dane's like so yeah. mad about it. Zayden's aware. And he's like basically bullying him in a way. We can pretend I'm not here just for the sake of the exercise. Zayden sets his dragon on the table and leans back in his chair, draping his arm across the back of mine, a move that makes Dane grit his teeth. Give Adis here the position we all know he craves. <laughs> like he's like, I'll let him be the wing leader but what he also really wants, he can't have because I have her. The woman was too stunned to speak. Oh, Violet's like, don't be a dick. And then in her head, he's like, you haven't seen anyone. And she's like, we can talk through our thoughts. That's with and crazy. Then Dane gets mad petty. He's like, why are you even here? No offense, sir, but we weren't ex exactly expecting senior leadership on this trip. You're more than aware that their dragons are made in three days. You couldn't make it three days. Then when Violet's like, it has nothing to do with him. Like, it's not Zayden, it's the dragons. Like, you know what I mean? And then Zayden goes, you never considered that it was you I couldn't stay away from? Like, Zayden, what are you doing? What are you doing? Dane wants to have the audacity. If men have one thing, they have the audacity. Then he goes, of course you rest defend him. Though, how can you forget that this guy wanted to kill you six months ago is beyond me. Babes, Babe. the minute there were people in my room trying to literally assassinate me, he was there to help me. When I told him that there was a wing leader in the room also trying to kill me, he believed me and you didn't. The whole thing about Amy, how it found out that she was the one that was in the room and like she helped them sneak into the room so that they could kill her in her sleep, which is a code rule breaker. Last time I checked, you knew Violet since y'all were childhood friends. You've known Amy for a year and you, and you believe, believe Amy, Amy over, over Violet? Violet? Dane, count your days because they are numbered. Then Violet's like, oh, you wanna go there? Oh, I got, all right, I got you, I got you. They do like a little challenge or whatever. And then she answers the question that Mira was asked. Then she goes to Dane and goes, you wanna do your job? I asked Dane, smiling sweetly. I mean, how you can forget you're the squad leader is beyond me. If Violet gonna be one thing, she gonna be a baddie. If she gonna do one thing, she gonna be a baddie. And I support, I support, I stand, I'm with Violet. <laughs> now here's my thing, I really do have a feeling that when they mention them secrets that it's gonna come to light, there's gonna be some bad secrets. But my thing is also like, if you feel like these secrets are so down bad that like it would give Violet a reason to never trust Zayden again in her life, why aren't you telling her? Like I don't understand. If you feel like this person, this man that I'm, I'm, I'm forced to be mated with, well not mated with, but like our dragons are mated and we're forced to be together for the rest of us regardless if we like your story or not, why aren't you telling me what's so bad about this so I can at least give a heads up and get a warning and be cautious? Like, <laughs> Be so be so for real. You look goofy and stupid. And it, and it, ugh, I just can't. I just can't. So I'm gonna keep reading and then I'll update y'all on what's in the crazy happened. Oh, that's 
this makes me so sad she's telling basically her sister how she can't be in the seat with the dragon how she's still struggling and she's like why didn't you tell me because there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing anyone can do about the way i made because she has eds mm. oh i gotta go i have an appointment in like 30 minutes Ooh, i gotta go so blb it's been a month. Um, I have not been reading the book because I've just been busy with filming, editing, life. But I'm gonna try to finish it today. I'm currently on page 343. And there's 498 pages. So I have 153 pages left. 155 pages left. So that's less than 200. So I'm definitely gonna finish this book today. And the reason why it takes, it's been taking me so long to finish reading this book is because with fantasy books, I realized because they're literally like thick like the Bible. After like reading it for like a solid like, hour or two, I start to get tired. It requires a lot of mental brain power to be able to like comprehend all of the new language that's going on, the world that you're in, and then just like making sure you're catching up and you're on track with the plot because so much happens. Like if you miss one detail, that detail could have been a clue to like give off the plot towards at the end or something like that so it's like you gotta pay attention like at all times when you read fancy books and i feel like because of that that's why after like a good few hours i get tired of like reading a fancy book so i'm gonna put it down and that's what was happening a lot with this book specifically so i kept taking breaks from reading it but then when i would take a break i would either not come back to the book or i would get busy and then a week passed and i haven't touched the book since so we're gonna finish this book today today is friday i'm currently in the car because i'm trying to make sure we don't get a ticket this wouldn't be happening if we had a parking spot, but our building organization is being stupid and will give us our parking spot. Okay guys, um, we have reached a pivotal point in the book and I had to, I had to record because I'm scared. Like, I'm on the verge of change right now, let me be honest. I'm currently on 438. I have 50 pages left. Something really bad's about to happen and I'm scared. I'm scared. I know this will pan out to be something good. Like, it'll be fine. Like, I know it'll be fine. I know this is a writing tactic because, like, every time I feel like, I don't know if it's with fantasy books specifically or just books in general, but I feel like a lot of times with fantasy books, the last 200 pages is where stuff hits the fan and everything you thought would happen doesn't happen or it does happen in the worst way possible. So, y'all remember when I said I thought, I thought Dane would be the one to portray Violet? Um, it looks like it's Zayden that's doing it, but I no, it's gonna be okay but i'm but just, I'm just really, really scared. scared they're basically at the part where we're at the war games and like zayden and violet were just like mid make out and then someone's like oh, look at you zayden look at what you're doing and he's like oh no she literally said we were warned the quadrant always loses 10 percent of the graduating class in the final test but it's more than that i just can't put my finger on it two different times violet was asked if she was okay because they just flew like you know seven hours and she's like physically i'm okay but mentally i can tell something's wrong and dane just finished going off on zayden about how he feels like you just try to gain violet's trust that you can get revenge for what her mother did to your dad i'm scared you know how when you're reading and then like because you're getting scared because of a part a scene that you're reading you like skip to see what's happening just so you can like be aware of what's happening so you like you can like be calm or that might just be a thing that people with anxiety do i don't know um oh my gosh i'm scared I just read the line that, that made me just have that reaction. Literally says, It hurts to rearrange everything you think you know. Lies are confident. Truth is painful. Zayden, you didn't have to go that hard. But like, he's speaking facts. But yeah, so what I thought was gonna happen isn't happening. I thought they were gonna like, give her away. <laughs> As like a ransom thing. It was just them talking to the enemy and her finding out that like he's talking with them. But it's not for what she thinks it's for. And he's like, hey, I know this looks bad, but just listen. And she's like, you touch me, I'm going to kill you. And Liam's like, I think she's telling the truth. And he's like, yeah, I know. <laughs>
Okay, so y'all remember? Y'all remember when I said I had a suspicion that Dane might do something shysty and crazy? I also have a terrible feeling that he is going to betray. The reason why I think he's going to betray her is because they keep mentioning how much he doesn't like breaking the rules. And the only time when he's okay with breaking the rules is when it's to benefit himself. I might have been right. I'm on page 449, right? And Zayden just asked, what did Dane say to you before we left? He leaned in and whispered something. I blinked trying to remember. He said something like, I searched my memory. I'll miss you. Violet. When you first read it, you're thinking he'll miss her because, like, you know, they're not going to be as close anymore. But we forget that Dane has the thing where he can do memories by touching somebody. Something that Zayden said to her probably got out somehow. And now it's going to bite them in the butt. They're like, something's off. N nothing is the way it should be. This is not the war games. This is like some for real, like attack that's about to happen. And the first person Zayden thinks is Dane. He's really pissing me off. He's picking and choosing when to be obnoxious. And he's always obnoxious when Violet literally tells him that she's making her own decisions. The reason why he wanted her out of the riders is not to save her life, but to save his own. He cares about her, but he cares about how the connection they had, how much losing her is going to affect him. Dane about to do something real shysty and I'm not ready to witness it, but like, I'm on page 449. Oh, man. So, William just died. <laughs> Try so hard not to cry. So they're in battle and Liam just died because his dragon died. Y'all, I'm sad. And also, I'm pretty sure that was um, Zayden's like foster brother. So basically, Zayden just lost his brother. So who was going to tell me that Brendan was alive this whole time? They thought he was dead for six years and he's alive. <sighs> that was the thumbnail. <laughs> I feel like I need a, a moment to process. It'd be one thing when I finish reading the book and I'm like, oh like oh i love it oh i love it and then i'm like i'm sad that it's over because now i have to move on to another world of a book but then there's other books that like i read and then i just become utterly speechless and this was one of them so i feel like this would be like a six stars first of all the way how the book ended on zayden's perspective absolutely chewed it up the second book is obviously going to be about the rebellion for her catching up about everything that she's been missing out on and had to figure out how to how she's gonna have to navigate life after this whole fiasco happened like I'm still bummed that Liam died though. That that was really upsetting to watch. I have come to my conclusions that Dane is an absolute, absolute skin and I want his head on a post. Salem wish trust styles because the way how this man knew that that was going to happen to them and he allowed her to go there, like that's supposed to be your best friend and you let her walk into a death sentence like that? See, not me personally. There could be a sliver of a chance that like Dane actually didn't do anything, but then again, it's like, I don't believe it because literally, first of all, not only was Dane a shysty skink, but also his father father is the reason why they ended up in that position in the first place because the father wrote the letter and was like survive if you can yeah! dane just has a special place in my heart to put a knife across his throat and through his chest several, several times yeah! 
I feel like if they described his death in a graphic, gory way, I would eat up every single word. She would have spit that I would just put it back in my mouth again. The way how Dane and his father deserve lethal death is actually crazy. And possibly the mother too. Well, here's the thing. I feel like the mother, she knows, but at the same time, there's a limitation of how much she exactly knows because there was a conversation that I think when they were at the day of the, like, whatever celebration they were celebrating, when the mother was there with the two of the guys and they were talking to Violet and Liam, the mother changed the subject to make it to, oh, let's go see, let's go see Dane. Let's go talk to him. And she clearly did that on purpose. The father loved her for a reason. We just haven't seen it. You know how they have that whole psychology thing where it's like, you know, your romantic partner is going to be a resemblance of like your parents, like your mother or your father. I'm pretty sure Zayden is like similar to the mother, to Violet's mother, because Zayden to the outside of looking in is like a lethal guy. But then to the people that he really cares about, he shows his softness. And I feel like the mother is the same because ain't no way how that mother was that cold and cruel and found someone to love her and have kids with her, three kids at that. So I feel like the second book will probably show that a little bit maybe because I feel like at some point there has to be a like a altercation between Violet and her mother to where they have an argument and then the mother reveals who she is as a person to the core because why would she send a child that she's well aware has a health condition that makes her body more fragile than others put her as a writer I'm pretty sure the mother like had a hope that she would make it to make her not feel as weak as everyone portrays her to be she knew that she had some strongness in her and she was just waiting for the right moment to make her push it out because when Violet was little she wanted to be a writer but then the dad was like <laughs> And then six months prior to the school starting, all of a sudden now the mother's like, you're gonna be a writer. That don't that make don't no make sense. sense. This hands down was one of the best books I've read this year. Fantasy writers, I adore you. You guys are doing your thing. You guys know what to do. I would love to see this as a movie. I would love to see what they would do with it and just pray they don't make it flop. The thing that's kind of crazy about how Violet is really hurt by what Zayden did by keeping secrets, it's kind of crazy that she's hurt by that when she's literally doing the exact same thing. Babe, they kept the secret for a reason. The reason that they kept the secret was logical. Not to say that you can't be upset that they kept the secret, but I feel like for you to be like, I forgive you, meaning that they did something wrong. When in reality, it's like, I understand why you did what you did, It's it's, it's but that doesn't mean it didn't hurt. Like, that's understandable, but for you to be like, I forgive you, I feel like there's nothing to forgive. Also, Zayden is like, he has a hard time trusting people because he's never cared for someone as much as he has for Violet before since his father died. And then come to find out that, like, his father's side was, like, in the right. That's why they had a rebellion, and then they lost. And then the mother was on the wrong side of history because the mother was fighting against them. But it could also be that like, so so here's my thing. Now that we know that Brennan's alive, it could be issued that, so maybe they just lied. I was thinking, so what did they see? the mother killed Brennan or did they just pretend that he died because he went to the other side so instead of admitting that he betrayed them they just sent him off or the mother said that the brother died but in reality she knew that he went to the other side because he's been there the whole time when I read that I it was not filming so when I read that I was like hold on because ain't no one calling her little sis besides Brennan that's why I had to start recording because I was like ain't no way that's Brennan ain't no, ain't no way because how you gonna sit here at the last page be like Surprise, Shade! Like, he's so, he's for, so real. for real. There's one last part that I want to talk about briefly. There was a part when she said, Zayden asked um, Violet, did he touch you like this? I'm guessing like lifting her chin up because he was like, he has to touch your face in order to get your memory. She also says, no, he always touches me like that. If he got my memories, I would be able to tell. And he was like, no, he wouldn't. He wouldn't be able to tell. The fact that she said, he always touches me like that, got me thinking. What if every time he was touching her like that, he was always reading her memories? So this man was always invading her privacy without her knowing and then she was like oh there was one time when he tried without consent but it's like that's the one time you knew about it because he said it all them other times he knew that he had this power and so probably in the beginning when she first got there he was probably always touching her like that knowing his power and then even when she found out when he told her about it she wouldn't know how he could find out the memories Dane's one of those guys that's like I'm the nice guy but the nice guy never wins he's one he's of those <sighs> That was, that was insane. insane. Now we're gonna have to see in the next book, Zayden and Violet teeter totter with their relationship. I wonder if they're gonna make the, the second book in Zayden's perspective, because I feel like that would be good because he's the one that knows everything now. So now we'll have to see everything from his perspective and him explaining it to Violet and seeing how he's gonna keep begging and pleading for her to forgive him, which she will, because he was like, you still love me. Like, yeah, you don't trust me, but you still love me. But again, I respectively feel like the fact that she's like, we can't be together because I don't trust you. I feel like the that's a bunch of hypocrisy simply because Renonin and Riddock don't know any of the stuff that she's kept secret about Zayden and she did it to protect Zayden.
Like, I'm pretty sure if they found out that she was keeping secrets from them, they would feel the same way. And you did it to protect somebody else, right? So if he did it to protect you, why can you understand that? I can understand that she's hurt by what happened, but for her to not forgive him, I think that's a bit much. That is it for this video. I feel like I can't read in the book for the rest of the day because I'm just like still processing. Those last 153 pages, 55 pages were a lot. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys like this video, please make sure to smash the thumbs up button and to subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already. I also have a podcast, Ray and Chats with Ananda, on Spotify. And it's also on my YouTube channel. If you want to follow my podcast Instagram, it's just I Ran Chats with Ananda. And also, you want to follow my personal Instagram, TikTok, and Threads, it's just I Ran Cash. If you read Fourth Wing and you want to have comments down below, comment your thoughts on Fourth Wing down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I I enjoyed reading this book and I hope I enjoy editing this video because I know it's gonna be a long video. It's gonna be heavy to, to edit, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!